everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. Today, I will be taking you on my journey into couture sewing. So if you don't know, I am a senior at North Carolina State University and I'm in the fashion design program. I'm almost done, one semester left. And this semester, I had the opportunity of taking an independent studies class. So I decided to make my class all about couture sewing techniques. So the first part of the class, I focus on just learning a bunch of couture sewing techniques. And then for the last month or so of the class, I decided to put all of those couture sewing techniques to the test and create a project using only couture sewing methods. So you guys got a little preview actually of my project right there. That is the prototype. Get excited about that. And yeah, basically this video is gonna be more of like a vlog style video where I take you through my entire journey journey with this dress. I'm going to vlog my entire process from inspiration to sketches to draping, prototyping, creating samples, beading, and of course the final construction and the result of this dress. Just a little disclaimer, I am in no way a couture expert. While I feel pretty confident in regular sewing and home sewing and more like industry type sewing, I am not a couture expert in no way, shape or form. The only experience I've had with couture sewing is this class, so I've only been learning it for a couple months. I'm not a couture expert, so I just want to put that out there, but I will be sharing with you guys some tips and tricks and couture sewing techniques that I have learned along the way and that I'm going to be using with the dress. So I will have some little tidbits of information for you guys so that you guys can use that in the future. And also I'll sprinkle in some resources throughout the video if you want to learn more. Oh, and if you're wondering like what sewing equipment and tools I'm going to be using throughout this video, that is all linked in the description. So you can go and check that out if you're interested. All right, so I think that's everything thing I wanted to say come along with me and sew this couture dress <laughs> okay so first off I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into my inspiration for the project so I made a little mood board and if you want to learn how to make a mood board in Google Slides I have a video up I will link it down below and I'll put a card on the top of the screen um, but mainly my inspiration were these two photos right here they are 1930s Madeleine V&A couture but yeah I just thought these photos were so beautiful but I got a little Chanel, Kleebacher, and Dior in the mix as well. And originally I wanted to use an ivory color um, because I wanted to make some sort of wedding dress. Like maybe not like an actual wedding dress, but some sort of like wedding, reception, dinner, something wedding dress because weddings. Why not, right? Anyways, these are my sketches. These are some earlier renditions. And then this is the final dress that I'm going to be making. So my plan is to create the body of the dress out of this lightweight 12 mummy silk shirmoose fabric from Dharma Trading. And then these shoulder pieces and the skirt overlay from a silk chiffon. And then right here you can see is a exciting design feature. I tambour beaded the entire waist piece and spoiler alert, oh my God, tambour beading like, my new love, like I love tambour beading. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to show you each. I just can't wait. I can't wait for you to see tambour beading. Like I'm so excited for you to see the tambour beading. Anyways, moving on. Okay, so right now I'm sizing my dress form to fit me because let's be real, whose body looks like that? I mean, maybe yours does, but mine sure doesn't. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get some batting that I got from Joann's and I'm double layering that. So you'll see me do the second layer in a second, but um, I'm double layering that and putting that on the spots where she is a lot thinner than me. So her waist, her hips, her legs are all thinner than me. And then her bust is larger than mine. So I'm gonna have to adjust that during the flat pattern making process. Um, my waist line is also higher than hers. So I'm changing her waistline. And then I'm going to also add some shoulder pads that I kind of ripped apart to spot treat certain areas that were really a lot thinner than me, um, just to give it some extra width to fit my body. And then as I'm going through this process, I'm continually measuring her to make sure that she is going to match up with my measurements. And then I didn't show this, but I do sew a quick slip to throw on over the padding, just so I'm able to pin in over a smooth surface. And then after that, you can just tape out and apply your style lines as normal. I ordered these fabric swatches from Dharma Trading Company. I'm going to be making this out of two fabrics, a chiffon and a charmeuse. So basically the two options I have are the champagne and the sage color, which is cute for sure. I would love to use it for a different project, but probably not this. So we're going to be going with the champagne. My prototyping fabric that I got is this Joann's chiffon. Got a lot of it. I don't wanna use muslin for this because I wanted something with similar drape to the fabric I'll be using. And a tip my teacher gave me for like figuring out what fabric you should use to like drape with. Let me stick it like this. She's, she's 
said to like move the fabric like this and see which fabrics respond the same way. So this is what we're going with. So I'm gonna put this on grain, aka I'm gonna like rip up the sides. Like, let me just do it for you. Let me do it for you. Okay, it's especially important like when you're working with well, really any woven fabric, but especially these because these like really shift out of place. I like to make a little cut, <laughs> like so, and rip it. Oh! And that just ensures that now we're working on grain. Okay, so now I'm draping with my chiffon and notice how the grain line, see that little pink line I have drawn in the fabric is going in the same direction as the neckline instead of straight up and down. And that is because when the person is wearing the garment, you don't want that neckline to end up stretching out. So that's why we put it on that grain line. After that, you just pin through the fabric and then mark the fabric and you got your pattern piece. Okay, for the gathers, I'm going to mark with a different color where I want the gathers to start and stop. So I think there and then like right here. And then I'm gonna measure because when we take out the pins, like it's, gonna be a large piece of fabric again. So I wanna know how much to gather it. So I wanna gather it so that it is three inches long. Now I gotta write that down, so I remember. <laughs> now I'm just gonna continue to drape the rest of my pattern pieces. And this was a very time consuming and challenging process because um, I had never draped with chiffon before, something other than muslin. So that was really challenging. But if you want a more in depth kind of more like tutorial on how I drape my garments, I will put a card on the top of the screen so you can click one of my other videos and I will link some down below where I go more into depth on how to drape. I'm back with pink hair. Here's the situation. I had my meeting. We looked at it. I have to redrape it. I have to I have to start over. So here's the issues I'm having. Issue number 1. I don't know what freaking grain line I'm supposed to put this on. So like for things like V-neck, you're supposed to put the grain line along the neckline. So that was good. For this waist piece, I put the grain line down the center front. Good. This whole thing is messed up. I have no idea what I'm doing. This I put on the bias and this, I put on the bias, which is not a good idea. I should have put it on the straight grain because the weight of it is just pulling, it's just pulling it in weird directions. So it, it looks like kind of saggy, let's be real. So this, I'm gonna put on the straight grain. This, I'm gonna put on the straight grain. This, I put on the crosswise grain. Why? I never do that because this piece is huge. This skirt piece, because it's so full, there's a lot of fullness right in this area. To cut it out on the fold, I had to put it on the crosswise grain and that's not what we want. We want to put it on the straight grain. So there's gonna have to be a seam, I guess here, which is, I think it's disgusting, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to redrape this. Oh, and also I have an entirely new piece to drape like that comes off from the shoulder. And I have my meeting at four o'clock today and right now it's 11.30. So hopefully I can get it done. It took me a long time to drape this, so. Also, I forgot to mention, I need to change these lines right here since I'm, I'm trying to make this more fitted, this hip piece. Um, and if it's more fitted and it's all the way down here, I'm not gonna be able to walk and like move my legs. So I need to bring this up. So I need to change these style lines. So. Yay. To mark out my style lines, I'm using really thin ribbon I got from Joann's, but I oftentimes really like to use washi tape, so that's a little tip there. Um, and then also just enjoy this clip of me falling on my butt. And then like I said I was gonna do, I'm going back and just redraping basically the entire skirt all on the straight grain because that shiz was messed up. And then this is what she looked like as the final drape. Okay, so I finally finished the patterns. Um, it took me like hmm, five hours to get everything nice and traced and trued up. So I had to make sure all of my seams like matched up on the sides. Like, like here, you wanna make sure all your seams match up. And so I have all these little pieces and then I have the skirt pieces. And then this piece is like huge. The um, figuration piece, let me show. It starts there and it literally goes all the way off the side, so <sighs> a lot of work. Okay, before I start sewing the actual dress, I wanna show you guys this couture sewing technique sample book I created throughout the semester. It basically just has all the samples I've made, 
on all of these different techniques throughout the semester. And then from this, I decided what techniques I'd be using for the dress. So I did some samples in the actual fabric that I'm using for the dress, which is that 12 mummy silk charmeuse from Dharma Trading. And I did a sample for a false French seam, a self-bound seam, and single binding done with a fell stitch. So you will see me go into more depth with these two later on and I'll show you how I did them, but not this one. And by the way, I did work out of this book, Couture Sewing Techniques by Claire B. Schaefer throughout the entirety of the semester because I can't like open it because I don't want to uh, get sued. It has really good information on what techniques to use and when you should use those techniques. So I will link this down below. Now it's time to start the long, 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 long process of cutting out all of my pattern pieces. And it's taking me a super long time because as you can see, I'm tracing out all of my pattern pieces first. And then I'm going back and adding seam allowance um, with my ruler and I'm adding half inch seam allowance before I then cut it out. And I'm doing that because like I said, I'm trying to make this dress with only couture techniques and that's what they do in couture. So it took a really long time to trace everything out, especially because the silk charmeuse really likes to move on you. So I had to do everything so extremely slowly. And I used a water soluble marking pencil. So you can see the little faint line of that water soluble marking pencil. I got it from Joann's, I'll link it down below. So now I wanna teach you guys a quick little couture finishing technique called false French seams. They look like French seams, but they're fake, haha. <laughs> so after I wax my thread and I sew my seam with half inch seam allowance, I take my seam allowance, fold them towards each other in half, and then I press it. So that's what I'm working with right here. And then I finish this off by sewing a whip stitch on those seam allowances to keep it closed. So that's what I'm sewing right here, a whip stitch. So I'm going from the back and pulling it towards the front and I'm just going all the way down that seam allowance on that seam. Um, and as you can see, they're very close together each stitch and the stitches are very close to the folded edge. These false French seams are a really good alternative to French seams if you are sewing on a curve or if you're sewing seams that need to be really tightly fitted towards the body. And like I'm showing you here, I'm going to be finishing off most all of my seams with false French seam finishes. So a lot of hand sewing took place over very many days. Here are some samples I did for tambour beading, which is just the couture beading technique. And I'll talk about it a little bit later on when I show you me actually doing some tambour beading. But here are some disgusting samples I made. Like this was supposed to be a flower. This is a dang starfish. Like, oh my God, that is horrifying. Um, this is the first round of samples I did, trash. This second round of samples I did, trash, trash. Oh, we're getting some right here. We're getting some right here. Ooh, cute. And then this is the one that actually inspired the beading for the actual dress. Um, but as you can see for timbre beading, the back is just super clean, super pretty. So it goes a lot faster and it's whew, gorgeous. And then this is a sample of a motif that I'm going to be doing for the actual dress. And I flatlined the charmeuse with a cotton, um, but I actually decided not to flatline it with a cotton for the dress. I'm going to be doing a silk chiffon flatline. So this is the motif, cute, cute, but um, these are not the actual beads I'm going to be using. And then if you're interested in learning more about timbre embroidery, timbre beading, this is the book I use. I will link it down below and I use it in conjunction with a bunch of other YouTube videos that I could find on the topic. Now I'm prepping some pieces for timbre beading and to do this, I'm thread tracing all the seam lines by just sewing a basting stitch on those seam lines. And I'm a dummy because as you can see, I have a bunch of the same pattern pieces traced out. It's supposed to be one front waist piece, which is on the top there, and then two back waist pieces, which are supposed to be on the bottom. But it seems I traced out more front pieces. So I don't know who did that, who let me do that. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. So I had to fix that up. But after that, I was ready to start timbre beading. Tambour beading, also known as tambour embroidery, is a couture beading technique in which you use a tambour hook and a tambour frame, as I'm using right here, to basically crochet a chain stitch through the fabric while also adding your beads or embellishments to the fabric. It takes a long time, but honestly, it's, it's faster than regular beading. Um, and for reference, this these clips are all sped up 
to a hundred times speed. So this took me a good couple of days. This is how the final result turned out and I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm definitely going to be using this technique later on in the future. And if you guys wanna try out this technique as well, I will link the timbre hook and frame down below as well as the book for timbre embroidery that I used as a resource. So I'm going to use another little hand sewing couture technique to apply the binding to the arms eye of my garment. So um, if you actually don't know how to apply binding normally with your machine, this might go over your head. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. But um, so instead of machine stitching the binding securely to the back of the garment, I'm going to be hand stitching a fell stitch along the back of the binding. So. To fell stitch, I take up a little stitch from the garment and then I take another stitch right in the fold of the binding. Then again, I will take up another little stitch in the garment and that is directly below where I just came out for the binding and then move on and take a little stitch from the binding and so on and so forth. Choosing to finish the binding with a hand sewn fell stitch instead of machine stitching the binding causes the binding to drape a lot nicer and be a lot softer along the arm's eye. And this is true for basically anything. If you choose to hand sew something instead of machine stitch it, it will generally be a lot softer and drape a lot nicer. I'm also going to be using fell stitches on all of my hems, which are hand rolled hems. So as you can see here, I've rolled the hem into a very small, little thin hem and then I'm just fell stitching that closed using obviously the same technique because it's the same stitch as I did on the binding. Okay, so let's check out this final dress. these corners aren't super sharp um, the seams are stretching because the fabric is so heavy and I wasn't able to fix that with the time constraint I had and let me tell you for couture sewing time is definitely your friend so I kind of ended up rushing basically when I started constructing the actual dress I only had about two weeks and like you know sewing takes a long time and hand sewing takes forever. Like it would take me like two hours to do one seam. One seam. I like my little Gracian things though. Ooh. Ooh. Um, another problem I was having was with the binding right here. So am I super happy about it? No. But you know, what can you do? Look at this. This is cute. Yeah. Okay. So that was the entire video. Hope you enjoyed it. Even though I wasn't completely happy with the dress because you know, lack of time. I was really happy with what I learned. You know, sometimes it's not about the final project, but the information that you learned along the way. So I'm really happy with everything I've learned throughout this course. And I am still, you know, pretty happy with the final outcome. Um, maybe I'll try dabbling in couture again. What am I saying? I'm never doing this again. This was way too much. I will use some of the techniques that I've learned, but I don't think I'll be making a full couture dress anytime soon maybe never say never though if you like this video be sure to subscribe to me i will have more informational tutorials in the future um and let me know what kind of videos you do want to see from me if you did enjoy this video feel free to hit the like button it is the easiest way to support your favorite creators if you haven't already definitely give me a follow on instagram and tiktok if you're interested in any of the sewing equipment or tools i use throughout this video all of that stuff will be linked in the description below so you can go and check those out and i think that is everything so Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time. Bye.